I have called uh, for this special hearing today based on the events uh, that took place on Friday. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of frozen things on the screen. Is it my internet? Are you all hearing me okay? You're good, Judge. Okay. Um, anyway, based on the events that I became aware of late in the day on Friday um, regarding the return of the children to Ms. Velasquez. So, um, this is a little unusual, but I've, I've got, got a lot of questions. So, I'm just going to start asking some questions. Uh, of some of you um, and then uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do from there. Also, Mr. McLaughlin has filed a motion that we need to address, but, but I want to talk about what happened Friday and why did we have uh, two children that all of a sudden had nowhere to go. If you will okay. unmute for me. Yes, ma'am. Right. If you'll raise your right hand for me. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you'll give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I know this is a little kind of different, y'all, but, you know, it, this is, we're not, we're not redoing our hearing from Thursday. That's not what we're here for. So, so Ms. Lucero, when, when were arrangements made about the return of the children? I mean, so those were late Thursday. We finished up kind of late in the afternoon Thursday. So just tell me what happened from there. So just to be quite honest with you, I wasn't involved in all the events that occurred Friday um, only because I worked a half a day. The only thing that I was aware of was that Miss Lisa had went out to the home um, to Maria's home to try to get in contact with her before she went and picked up the kids from the placement they were in. Um, that was the last that I had involvement up until later that evening. Um, I had took off at noon and I reached out to my supervisor at about five. At that point, I felt like the kids probably would have been home by then. Um, and my supervisor informed me that they were still having issues. So at that point is whenever I came back into the office to kind of try to help out. Um, so I'm not fully aware of what was occurring in the morning time. Okay. So I'm going to put you on the back burner for a minute. Ms. Godsey. I assume that was you. She was referring to Lisa. Okay. If you will raise your right hand, I'm going to start with you then. You promised to tell the truth today? Yes. Okay. I, I think this will just be easier if we can try to address it chronologically. So, all right, Ms. Godsey, tell me what happened. Um, after our hearing on Thursday, I did contact foster parents and let them know to start preparing the boys for the move. That way they had a heads up. I was um, going to try to arrange my Friday to where I could go and pick them up and get them home to them on Friday. My initial plan was to pick them up in the morning as uh, foster placement had other arrangements that afternoon. That was not able to happen. I started trying to contact Maria at 830 in the morning uh, around, I think, 11 ish. Um, I sent her a text at 830 in the morning and I did not receive a response. So around 11 ish, I tried calling her and her phone went straight to voicemail. I immediately. Okay. Let, let me stop you. What was the text, the content of the text at 830? I'm sorry, I have to pull it up and look at it. It's, right. it's okay. That's been a few days ago. Yep. It says, everybody get, okay, your, was everybody that, get your phones ready. It was at 823 AM. I texted her, I said, Maria, I'll be picking up the boys today and bringing them to you. I can let you know a more specific ETA after I pick them up. And then at 1116, I texted her and told her, I have called and texted you, but I have not heard anything back. At which time I called her mom to see if she had heard anything from her. And she said that she hadn't. And then immediately after that, let me find those texts. I'm sorry, it's a lot. It's okay. Um, around 1238, and it says, hello, this is Maria. My phone is at home dead. 
and I had CDL training. I didn't know until last night, but can my mom or Raina pick up the boys? At which time I messaged her back and asked her to call me. And then she did call me and um, I just explained to her that I could only return the boys to her care. She told me that she was six hours away and that she would be there by, by six. And she told me by six in a text. But she told me at that time, it was a little afternoon that she would be, that she was six hours away. Okay. And then there were some texts from her starting at 1241. Um, that was whenever she tried to call me and I was on the other line. It said it went straight to voicemail. And then at 1245, she said that she is on her training. I'm training to get my CDL, but I'm on my way back. We'll be there by six. It's just I had to take a test and drive for them. And then at 1245 also, but I'm coming now and I told them I can finish, I can't finish the test at 1246. I thought I'd be done by now, but I had to do a physical two and online test. 1250, I didn't know they would call me so quick to take it, but I thought I'd get it out of the way so I don't have to do it while I'm in school. 1253, I drove to Spring, Texas to do it to do it because it won't let me do it in Amarillo. I had to go through a private company because my of my background. 1253 as well. It just a backup income. 1256, but I guess it will have to wait on my way back. My attorney didn't think it would be this quick and said a day or two. So I went ahead and took the appointment to test. I wish I'd have known the, the exact time. At 109, they told me I can't finish it because I can't drive in Texas. I thought it was just Amarillo, but they said I can take it in another state. I thought if I went through some private company that I could, I could, but I guess I can't. 110, that that's messed up. So they could have told me this before I drove and spent money on a test. And at 3.44 p.m., I see you're just going to... I see you're going to ignore me and act like I didn't communicate, but I did have, did and have been your phone don't receive calls. So I'm recording everything. And I wasn't communicating with her through those texts because I was on the road. Okay. I was instructed to go ahead and go pick up the boys as planned um, and bring them back. So I did. And I, brought them back. We got here around, oh, I want to say four o'clock. And then I was told to go ahead and go by her home. So I went by her home and knocked on the door and this day answered the door and told me that she wasn't there. And I asked if he knew where she was. And he said that she was working. And then he told me that she was working. He kind of him hauled around about whether or not he was going to tell me where she was working at. And I asked him if he knew where at and he said, no. And I was like, okay, well, do you know what she does for work? And he said, I think she's cleaning rooms or something to make extra income. So then we went back to the CPS office and called Maria again from the phone at 4.30. And um, it was, I believe Kelsey and I, I called her off my phone because Kelsey had tried to call her, but she didn't answer on that other number. I called her off my phone and Maria stated that she was still six hours away at 4.30. Okay, long and short, then kids went back to prior placement. I was not involved after 4.30. Okay, all right. So that's when Ms. Lucero came back on duty, so to speak, right? Yes, and also I forgot before I left, I went by Maria's house and knocked on the door and a gentleman yelled, um, from inside the house, who is it? And I clearly announced myself and then there was nothing heard back. I did wait a few minutes and knocked again, but then there was no response after that. Okay. Did you have any participation in the conversation about, grand, about dropping the children with grandmother 
or did you talk to grandmother other than you mentioned you reached out to her to see if she'd heard from Maria or then earlier in the day? Right. Um, during one of those texts, she did ask to drop them off with either grandmother or Raina, at which time I explained to her that I could only drop them off with her. Right. Did you ever have any conversations with the grandmother, though, about? I, I doubt it because I think that came up maybe after 430, but I'm just just trying to make sure. Did you ever talk to grandmother or anything? I talked to grandma just to see if she had heard from Maria, but there was no mention of leaving the kids with grandma. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Godsey. Um, okay. Ms. Lucero, let's go back to you. Yes, ma'am. All right. We'll pick up where you stepped back in. Okay. So whenever I, I called my supervisor um, about the situation at hand to, to make sure that the kids had gotten home safely and everything. And I was told that they, that they, she still had the children at the office. Um, at that point, I did go up to the office. I told her that I would just come in because I felt like it was my responsibility, regardless of whether I had taken the day off or not. Um, and I did have a conversation with grandma. Um, I know my supervisor spoke with grandma, with Sylvia, as well as myself. Um, and I had explained to Sylvia that we were trying to figure out where Maria was at so she could get the kids. Um, at that point, she had explained to me, um, which she had actually explained to me prior to, to this situation as well, that she did not want to take the kids in until she would be approved through HUD um, to get a bigger home where she could move to where um, Maria couldn't just show up and cause problems for her at the house. Um, I asked her why this was, and she explained that um, before the adversary hearing, um, Maria and her brother had went and broke down her door and they had stolen. Okay, I don't, I don't wanna go into any of that. Okay. I, I just wanna talk about the events of Friday. Okay. So she, you know, for whatever her reasons were though, basically she refused to take possession of the children. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That, that's all. I, I don't want to, I don't want to go into the rest of that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Did you then have any discussions with Ms. Velasquez at on that point, Friday? No, ma'am, I didn't. At that point she was, um, because she had been speaking with Elisa and my supervisor, my supervisor had asked her to direct all communication to her. Um, and that's, and that's, you know, I really just help with the placement of the kids that night again. Um, and so she, okay, probably okay. my supervisor has more info on that. Okay. So that's Ms. Moore, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Ms. Moore, if you'll unmute and if you'll raise your right hand, you solemnly swear to tell the truth today. Yes, you do. Okay. Tell me what you know. Um, so... I kind of got involved um, when Ms. Gotti arrived with the uh, children at the CPS office, and we did call Maria together to find out where she was, um, and that's when she did state again that she was six hours away, and I said, Maria, you're supposed to be six hours away four hours ago. I mean, like, you're supposed to be almost here, and she said, well, I've been tired and I need to pull over and sleep and I need to eat. And I said, so when can, when can you get here to pick up your children? Because I'm ordered to return them to you. And she told me um, that she thought she might could be there by 10 o'clock. And so um, in the meantime, that's when I got information that we could possibly release the children to the grandma. And so I called um, the grandma and asked her if she would be willing to take the children until Maria got back into town. And, uh, she was explaining some other events that had happened and said that she did not want to take the children unless they were being placed with her through, through you essentially. And I said, well, we're not really doing placement. Um, they're court ordered to go home. We just need somebody that can take them until um, you know, Maria can get back into town. And she said, I'm scared. I don't feel safe taking them. Okay. And I said, okay. 
All right. So at that point in time, then we made arrangements to return them to placement. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Lucero, did you actually return the children to placement? She and I, we both went together to place okay. the children. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. All right. Ms. Velasquez, if you will unmute. All right, if you can adjust your phone or whatever so that I can see you and you need to raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you'll give will be the truth? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so <coughs> Ms. Velasquez, when did you leave town to go to this training? Um, I left Thursday night and um, around 10 or 11 and we were supposed to be here. Okay, you muted your phone. It was rush hour, and the ticket to get to where we were, the the load uh, took a while to get picked up. So we <laughs> we had a like a a little bit of layover. But on my way back, I was also tired, so we took some time to to take a nap. Whenever I spoke to Miss. Dodsy. Okay, so hang on a minute, because you you're, you muted your device, so we missed some stuff, but, and then you had your hand in front of no. your mouth, so it was hard. No, no, to no. Hear the, you. So, the device is so you. The device is not muted. It was for a few seconds. So okay, sorry. Let me back it's up. My hand. Let, let me back up. All right, you said you left around ten or eleven o'clock Thursday night. Yes, ma'am. To go to Spring, and, Texas. Yes, ma'am. And that was to take a CDL driver's test. Yes. Okay. And how long were you anticipating on being in Spring for that test? Well, I was. I wasn't planning on being there long because he also had a load to take to Houston. So. I mean, it wasn't going to be long, but since I found out I couldn't take the, um, since I found out that I couldn't do driving in Texas, I just went ahead and didn't take it. Okay, but so, so I'm trying to clarify. Who were you with? Um, Ricky, my friend Ricky. Mendoza. Okay, Ricky. All right, is this a boyfriend? That, no, he's, no, he's just a friend. Okay. So you're saying he had a load to take on to Houston? Yes, ma'am. So were you were riding with him? Yes, ma'am. So before you ever left home, I mean, I want to make sure I understand. You were going to go through spring and then on to, your plan was then to go on to Houston. Yes, ma'am. And, and then back to Amarillo? Yes, ma'am. Did you think that you should call anyone with the department to tell them you were going to be gone for over 24 hours? Um, no, I, I let my attorney know because I was leaving and I told him, I asked him how long did, did he think that it would be? And he said, uh, a day or two and so when I left I left my brother at my my house watching my house and I left him my cell phone and he I don't know what he did he ran over my phone and broke it that night and so I didn't even know my phone was broke until I got back so I had no idea why I wasn't getting phone calls I was calling my phone and he wasn't answering so I just went ahead and checked my voicemail and found out that they were calling me at 12 and Okay, well, I, I guess I guess I don't. Here's what I don't understand. I made a decision on Thursday afternoon for the children to be returned to you. Yes, and I, I thought they I would made, let me I, know. Hang on, twenty four hours. Hang on. I I didn't tell you it be it would be twenty four hours. I didn't tell you that it would be Friday. I didn't tell you that oh it could be Monday. I didn't tell you any parameters other than I don't know when that will be that you will need to coordinate that 
with the department. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. And you okay. also I said not I to bother them. I, I didn't say coordinate that with your lawyer. I said, you'll need to be in communication and coordinate that with the department for when they're gonna return the kids. You said not okay. to bother them, so I didn't bother them. I didn't say don't bother them. I said, I don't want any more cussing and ugly talk and you know, being contentious with them. I, I think I made it very clear that- phones. Yeah, I did say that. I did say that, but communicating with them and saying, hey, I don't know when the kids are gonna, when you're gonna try to bring the kids home, I'm getting ready to make a long haul trip to Houston, Texas and back, which, you know, on a good day, you know, you're talking about a 10 to 12 hour drive from here to Houston. If you stop every once in a while and if you get into any kind of traffic, I mean, you know, you're talking about easily a if you did nothing but drive, you're talking about a 24 hour trip. So my point to you is this all comes back to communication. I don't understand why yes, you wouldn't have texted or called Ms. Lucero and said, hey, I'm going to be gone for 24 hours or or something to that effect. Or when are you going to bring the kids? Because I need to go to Spring, Texas and on to Houston and then back. I'll be I'll be home on you know, Saturday or that, that's all I'm trying to find out. I mean, I just feel like. I figured they would call me and tell me beforehand, 24 hours beforehand so that I could have things ready. I mean, I just, and no, I didn't get a call that night. So I was like, maybe it's not going to be tomorrow. It'll be the next day. Okay. Well, I guess that's what we get for assuming things, you know? So when it, when it comes to your children, you know, let's don't make assumptions, okay? Let's yes. let's nail it down, okay? Let's have a plan. I mean, I I just I don't get it. Why you wouldn't have communicated with somebody that you were going to be out of town when you knew that they were going to be bringing the kids at some point. So, I'm gonna, you know, Ms. Velasquez, I'm gonna just, stand by my, I'm gonna stand by my ruling last Thursday and I'm gonna have them return the children to you. I fully expect that you're going to be in communication with these folks about when that's gonna happen. Uh, are you back? Are you back home? Are you back in town? Yes, ma'am. I got back at two o'clock in the morning and I texted her as soon as I woke up and told her I'm back. I'm sorry, I got back in at two, and I just I, I, I expressed to her that um, they could have waited a little longer, and I know that it um, it was a okay. decision I made without thinking maybe, and just it was it was really a stupid choice I think. Okay, so in who in whose fault was this in your mind? Mine. Bingo. That's the whole point of this discussion. And I think I've, I've been beating myself up about it every day. So I don't want to hear that it was Ms. Godsey's fault or that it was Ms. Lucero's fault or that it was Mrs. Moore's fault because it wasn't. No, so, it's not. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. McLaughlin has filed a motion to withdraw as your attorney. Have you seen that motion? No, ma'am. All right, that's based on his belief that the two of you cannot effectively communicate because uh, I guess that you feel like he's not done a good job for you. Um. 
He, listen, yeah, he's a big, he, you say what you want to say. He's a big boy. He can handle it. No, I mean, I don't feel like he's, I don't, I don't feel like anything. I just ex express my opinion to him, but I don't feel, I think he's doing a good job. Well, is there, I mean, you know, if, if one text to someone will suffice, why send 50? Oh, you know? I don't know. I'm a big I, I speaker. Mean, if people are, you know, these people are busy people and they're not always right where they can respond to a phone call or to a text message or something like that, you know. Um, so if you've texted Mr. McLaughlin, hey, I need to talk to you. Will you please call me? Why is that not sufficient? Why do you need to send another 25 or 30 or whatever messages? Um, um, how is that, I guess how does I that help? I have a problem with that. I, okay. I guess I talk too much. Well, but you understand, I mean, these people have other things that they have to do other than be at your beck and call. Yes, ma'am. And, and whether it's Mr. McLaughlin as your attorney or anybody else that I assign to represent you, it's going to be the same story. They've got other things to do. They're not always in a situation where they can answer a telephone or they can respond to a text message. They may be in a consultation mm -hmm. with another client. They may be in a courtroom somewhere. You know, they may be, you know, at a doctor's appointment. They're, believe it or not, lawyers are people too. Yes, ma'am. Contrary to, you know, popular opinion. You know, I mean, so I'm if you've sorry. got a problem with know. Mr. McLaughlin, if you've got a problem with Mr. McLaughlin, I'm going to allow him to withdraw as your attorney, even though I think he's done a very fine job for you. I mean, I'm a, I don't have a problem you, with him. I don't, I have not told him I have know, a problem with him. But you can understand why it's problematic when you are incessantly texting him morning, noon, and night about the same thing you got to give yes, you know you got to give somebody the opportunity to respond yes ma'am i'm going to allow him to withdraw and i'm going to substitute someone in but ms watson is you better you better approach things in a different way with your new lawyer yes. i'm just telling you Yes, ma'am. A lot of lawyers won't even give you their cell phone number. They'll give you their office number, and you can leave messages with an, a service or on an answering machine at night, and you'll get a call back when you get a call back. But, you know, I'm just telling you, you, you just, you know, people have lives outside of their work and and you need to be respectful of that yes ma'am so we're gonna do better about communication right yes ma'am i understand you went and took your drug test yes ma'am all right i'm glad that you did that that's a positive thing that's a step in the right direction you remember what I talked to you about last Thursday about cooperation and everything else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So is it your desire for the children to come home? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay. Ms. Katie, who will be up next on our list?
William Taylor Judge. All right. Your new attorney is a gentleman named William. He goes by Bill Taylor. And uh, Miss Katie, I think you have her email address um, to send her that information. Is that correct? I believe so, Judge. I'll check it. If I don't have it, I'll get it from Mr. McLaughlin. Okay. Do you have a working email, Ms. Velasquez? Um, not since my phone broke. Um, since everything is connected to my phone number, I have to get a, a, a code to get back in my email. So I was using my friend Ricky's to do this court right now. If we get that I information he, to Ms. Lucero, we, Ms. Lucero, can you all exchange that, you think? Yes, we can. Okay. Would you put your email in the chat just to make sure Ms. Katie has it? Yes. Okay, Ms. Velasquez, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to... I'm going to tell you, treat Mr. Taylor with respect. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and be mindful that he has other things to do. But yes, ma'am. He'll do a good job for you, you know, if you'll work with him, if you'll cooperate and try to be cordial with him and professional with him, he will do the same. What what your what information are you wanting? I am needing to get um, the email or the number where I can get a hold of Maria so that we can start her FCT uh, program, her therapy program, and so I'd like to get started on that right away. So I wanted okay. to see if we could share that information also to St. Francis so that we could get a hold of her and get those started. Sure, Ms. Ms. Lucero, do you mind sending all that to them? Yes, I can do that. Thank you. Thank you. The number. Is... 